team of professors from the École Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne, EPFL, in Switzerland, have designed an introductory course on information, computing, and communication as part of the mandatory curriculum for the first-year bachelor students across all sections of the engineering school. This video clip is the first one in a series that covers a substantial part of this course. More specifically, it is the first of three clips that cover the introduction lesson to the whole course. This first lesson aims to introduce the subject by positioning it with respect to other disciplines and explaining how it has become as essential as reading, writing and counting to the point that it deserves to be a focal point in the academic curriculum leading to any engineering profession. This first video clip will suggest how the exponential growth of the world population has led to exponential progress in sciences, technologies, and in particular information and computing technologies. The second video clip of this introductory lesson will then suggest how information and computing technologies have penetrated all sectors of human activity, are particularly important to the tertiary services economy of our post-industrial societies, and have become as essential as literacy and accounting in any profession, from agriculture to engineering, commerce, government, etc. It will conclude by sketching a couple of the most recent emerging trends in information and computing technologies. The third video clip in this introductory lesson will outline the content of the course by offering a brief survey of the topics to be addressed in its lessons and more specifically in the ensuing video clips. Information and computing technologies have seen a particularly steep exponential growth curve over their short history. Exponential growth is however characteristic of many areas, the first of which is world population. This slide shows that world population has grown from less than a billion people to over 7 billion people in barely 500 years. More specifically, from 1500 to 1900, the world population grew on average by less than 3 million people per year, whereas between 1900 and 2000, it grew by 44 million people on average. As a result, one must accept the logical, though striking, conclusion that the number of people alive today is larger than the total number of people who have ever lived. Put another way, just as logical and equally striking is the fact that 99% of the scientists and engineers in human history are still alive today. It is therefore not surprising that sciences and technologies in general and information and computing technologies in particular, have seen similar exponential developments. Witness to this is the fact that it took millennia to discover the first tools such as fire, arrowheads, wheels, etc. Yet over the past two millennia, every century has brought its own technical innovations. Similarly, the past two centuries have brought more revolutions than the entire early history. The last two decades of the 20th century have brought more technical progress than the whole 19th century, and today every decade brings its own technical breakthroughs. Adults of Generation X, born between 1960 and 1980, have never known a world without computing. Their Generation Y children, who are today's students, have never known the world without the web, and their grandchildren, in turn, will find today's Facebook and smartphones primitive and uninteresting. Of all technologies, the information and computing ones have, however, enjoyed particularly steep exponential developments. Over the past 50 years, these reflect what is called Moore's Law, a prediction forecasted by Gordon Moore in 1965, which has no scientific foundation but characterizes the progress in computing technologies that Moore forecasted over the past 50 years. Gordon Moore predicted that the density and speed of transistors would double every 18 months or around that, which turned out to be accurate up to a few years ago where things seems to be slowing down a bit owing to some physical limitations. 
The present slide reminds us that language and counting go back to prehistory. Writing and mathematics did, however, not emerge until the beginning of written history. And the first tools in support of writing, Gutenberg's printing press and computing, the slide rule, date back only to the 15th and 16th century, respectively. The first machine that could truly be called a computer was invented by Charles Babbage, and the first algorithm to run on it that could, call, that could be called a program was due to Ada Lovelace, Lord Byron's daughter. Both she and Babbage lived in the 19th century, though Babbage's engine was not built until this century, and then only as a museum exhibit, of course. The first electronic computers, which occupied entire rooms, did, however, not appear until the early 40s. The 60s saw the advent of more compact mini-computers, and the 80s brought portable microcomputers. Although ARPANET, the ancestor of the Internet, was switched on in 1969, the web did not emerge until the early 90s. The explosion of multimedia, web applications, Google, Facebook, Twitter, etc., portable devices, smartphones, and tablets, which today gate and control access to the Internet via cloud computing, all date back only to the present century. The lines on this semi-logarithmic graphic illustrate Moore's law and similar exponential observations about three technologies that are fundamental building blocks for computing systems. The green line shows the evolution of the density of computer chips according to Moore's law itself, which went from about one million transistors around 1990 to a few billion transistors today, meaning a factor of about a thousand, ten to the third, in ten years. The blue line shows the evolution of the storage capacity of magnetic disks, which went from a few hundred megabytes around 1990 to over one terabyte today, meaning a factor of about 10,000, 10 to the fourth, in 10 years. The red line shows the evolution of the bandwidth of network communication lines, which went from about one gigabit per second around 1990 to over 100 terabits per second today, meaning a factor of about 100,000, 10 to the fifth, in 10 years. These quasi-straight lines on semi-logarithmic scales, thus exponential curves in reality, illustrate the speed with which computing technology makes possible, or even trivial, applications that were impossible not so long ago. This slide and the next one do not focus specifically on Moore's law. However, they show the increasing pace with which more recent information and computing-related innovations pervaded our societies compared to older technologies. Video recorders, CDs, DVDs, personal computers, cell phones, and the web emerged closely together and were broadly adopted much faster than telephony, radio, TV, and credit cards years ago. The earlier technologies took 40 years or more to reach 80% of the population in the industrial world, whereas the later technologies exploded and some even disappeared again within barely 10 to 20 years. This next slide conveys the same message, although in a somewhat different form, showing the adoption rate of each technology directly in numbers of years rather than over astronomic years. The curves relating to more recent technologies are thus all squeezed to the left of the graph, while those pertaining to older technologies spread more slowly further out to the right.